there are a lot of people that this system works for. Who it doesn't work for is the city as a whole. One of our problems is we have no guiding vision. A great city's vision should be a document that not only we all want to read, but we all want to experience. We must insist upon long-term consistent funding. You can't fund a plan this year and next year and then stop for five years. We have to think of new ways of, of doing community plans in a way that balances the needs of the citywide vision with the community. Prop U, which sought to control the population by controlling building, it cut zoning in half on our commercial boulevards. And the result of Prop U was it made it a lot harder to build capacity, to build housing for, for people. And despite the fact that we slashed the city's zoning capacity, we still increased our population by 500,000 people. During that same time period, we only added about 75,000 net new housing units. The tools that we've brought to bear to deal with our housing crisis are basically the tools of exclusion. They are zoning, and even if the people who are using these tools of exclusion are good people with good intentions, they result in the same thing, which is a city that is not open to everybody. And it's more expensive for those of us who stay here. The pro-housing people have a very regional approach, which is, if vacancy rates are too low, housing prices are gonna go up across the board, and there are hundreds of thousands of households who are gonna be negatively impacted by that. At the same time, if we don't plan well, um, you have people who are evicted, who aren't protected. I think LS Act reform is something that we should really be looking at as a way to address the short-term impacts of displacement at the same time as we continue to promote more housing. We tend to talk about building new housing, um, affordable housing as the solution. And I would really like for us to have a conversation as a city about can we use some of that funding instead of building new housing at three or four or five hundred thousand dollars a unit, can we buy existing buildings? Because we live in an environment where the focus is on build, 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 but it's not in some, in some new frontier that's not currently occupied by anyone, it's in places where people live. First, if you're going to protect those communities, working class communities, low income communities, you need, to put the, you, need, you need to have strong mechanisms in place. Before we get to discussing whether we need more housing um, and where to put that housing, let's talk about how we're able to keep our existing communities, which have special character, which are diverse, and which makes Los Angeles an envy of many regions of the world, how we can protect that, that conversation forces us to talk about the challenge of, of gentrification, which is really the spatial expression of economic inequality.